In our first video chat, we focused on the importance of the first two weeks after birth in the establishment of breastfeeding and lactation. In our second video chat, we focused on what to expect during the maternity hospitalization and how to get breastfeeding off to a good start. In our third video chat, we focused on tips for surviving the first week at home while you're breastfeeding. For this video chat, we're going to talk about certain maternal health conditions that may cause problems with breastfeeding. Until recently, we really didn't know that some maternal health conditions can increase the chances of breastfeeding problems, even when babies are born full term, healthy, and eager to breastfeed. Talking about these conditions is really difficult because a mother might think, I just won't try if I know I'm going to have problems. Or she might stop breastfeeding early because her self-confidence is shaken or weakened. However, it's important to know which conditions may affect lactation so that mothers are not caught off guard after the baby is born. It's also important to have a plan in place to get the right breastfeeding help in the early days after birth. This video chat reviews maternal health conditions that may increase the chances of breastfeeding problems and describes what to watch for during the first two weeks. First of all, keep in mind that a health condition may increase the chances of breastfeeding problems in general, but it does not mean that you will have problems. For example, in my practice in newborn intensive care, I routinely help mothers who have several of these conditions and are using a breast pump and are separated from their babies. Many of these mothers go on to make plenty of milk, but most had a temporary or short-lived delay in milk production during the first week after birth. This is actually the case with many, but not all, maternal health conditions. A slow start with milk production but catching up within a week or two, and after that, going on to breastfeed as planned. With other less common health conditions, mothers may be able to make some milk, but not always enough milk to breastfeed exclusively. But key to solving these problems is having information, which this chat provides, seeking expert help, and most of all, not getting discouraged. Maternal conditions that affect breastfeeding can be long-standing health problems or complications that arise during pregnancy or birth or both. One very high risk problem is having had a previous breast surgery of any type. This includes augmentations or making the breast larger, reductions or making the breast smaller, biopsies and nipple piercings. These procedures can block ducts in the breast that ordinarily carry milk to the nipple. If the milk cannot be removed, it cannot be replaced. However, some milk ducts may not have been affected. So mothers usually make some milk, but not always enough milk to breastfeed exclusively, at least in the early days after birth. Other long-standing problems that can affect breastfeeding include infertility, problems getting or staying pregnant, especially in first time mothers and mothers who are older than 35 years old, high blood pressure, overweight and obesity, diabetes, polycystic ovarian syndrome, and other chronic diseases. During pregnancy, a very high risk condition is the lack of increasing fullness in the breasts especially in combination with another condition, such as those just discussed, age over 35, history of infertility, polycystic ovarian syndrome, or the inability to fully breastfeed a previous baby if you have had excellent support to make breastfeeding work. These symptoms suggest that the breast may not have the number of milk-making cells needed for full lactation. 
So while some milk production is likely, exclusive breastfeeding may not be. Other pregnancy and birth complications include preeclampsia and other blood pressure related problems. Greater than normal blood loss during delivery, bed rest during pregnancy, preterm birth, and cesarean delivery. Also, while most medications to treat these conditions are completely safe with breastfeeding, they may slow down early milk production. Maternal overweight and obesity affects about three-fourths of all women of childbearing age and has been linked to several breastfeeding problems, especially the temporary delay in early milk production. Some mothers with this problem go on to make enough milk, but others do not. Mothers with overweight and obesity often have trouble positioning their babies at the breast to feed, so some of the problems may be due to ineffective or inefficient milk removal on the part of the baby. A lactation specialist can help with special breastfeeding positions in these situations. Breastfeeding problems that are related to maternal health conditions are the most concerning in the early days after birth, when almost all mothers struggle to sort out what is a normal breastfeeding behavior from an abnormal breastfeeding behavior in their babies. The most important thing to watch for is that babies drink enough milk and that they do not lose too much weight during this time. Seek out expert lactation help and share your concerns with your baby's primary health care provider, who will probably want to check your baby's weight gain more frequently until breastfeeding is fully established. The baby weight scale may also be helpful during this time. This very accurate baby scale can be rented and used in the home to measure how much milk a baby drinks during breastfeeding, or it can be used each day to weigh your baby in order to monitor your baby's weight gain. Discuss this product with the lactation specialist and your primary care provider to see if it would be helpful for you during the first two weeks at home. So we'll end our video chat today with four takeaway messages. First, there are maternal health conditions that may cause breastfeeding problems. And these problems tend to be the most concerning in the first days after birth. Second, having these conditions does not mean that you will have breastfeeding problems. Instead, it means that you should watch your baby closely to make sure that your baby drinks enough milk and does not lose too much weight. Third, the key to managing these possible breastfeeding problems is having information, looking for expert help, and most of all, not getting discouraged in the beginning. And finally, the baby weight scale can be used to measure how much milk your baby drinks at the breast and can also be used to measure your baby's daily weight gain. So talk to the lactation specialist and to your primary healthcare provider to see if the baby weight scale may be helpful to you during these first two weeks after birth.